So today, um, we're going to be discussing the National Defense Authorization Act, I think, and so I was wanting to go over that and see, talk about it. So basically is, we're going to, it's a kind of a juxtaposition. Um, the Steven Semler dude, he basically is making an article. And he's trying to juxtapose how much we spend for, like, infra uh, military infrastructure versus, like, uh, social spending. So that's the things going to be things like the infrastructure bill versus, like, uh, the Build Back Better bill that failed. So these juxtapositions between each other. So Joe Biden just signed the F Fiscal Year 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, into law. Now the terms authorized lower military spending higher than any point during the Trump administration budget is, is confirmation that Biden effectively doubled down on the same new Cold War framework but implemented under the previous administration. In this way, it's like... Tr I don't like this um, because here's the issue. Is any bill you implement is going to be high, more than the past bill because due to inflation so you could say 740 billion to 778 billion is roughly the same maybe so 2021 to 2020 to inflation okay so if we're looking at 740 billion, 778. Let me see, how much is it? 740 billion. How much is 740 billion from 2021 and 2022? for inflation. Twenty twenty one inflation. So seven hundred forty times point oh six eight, I think. Point oh six. So that's six. So plus seven hundred forty, seven hundred eighty-four. So if you do a rough calculation, he's actually like seven hundred forty billion in twenty twenty-one. If if I, I'm probably really stupid on the numbers here, but seven hundred forty billion, it's. The inflationary rate is like he's actually spending less than the inflation, which it's still pretty like thirty eight billion more like than the last point. That's still pretty a lot, right? But in terms of an inflationary rate, probably isn't that much as a whole. So this argument that this is oh, this is really frustrating for me as like a lefty is we spend so much time, so much energy to say that Trump and Biden are the same. And it's like, dude, like all the shit that we've passed recently, like that would never be the same. You could say it's frustrating to, but to like say like 778 billion, that increase is like frustrating. But you have to understand if you're going to go like inflationary measures, then it's like fucking the same, you know? Like it's literally the same amount. He doesn't spend any more. So like it didn't work trying to build for supporting his domestic agenda, implying China's a threat. It didn't work for the infrastructure bill. China evoked more. I, I don't like him citing his own articles. I don't like I don't like people citing their own articles that they've written before, because it basically builds towards like a bias. Described nearly as an essential part of the U.S.-China competition, saying the bill will make one of the best. Um, Is this guy? Who's Andrew Bates? 
Things just start. I have no idea who that is. Um, Andrew Bates. And the press secretary. Okay. As the central part. Because in China's outpacing as the infrastructure will pass. The Build Back Better backed was cut in half and then shelved after Biden failed to get any Republicans. His son was on his on board. Okay, sure. You could say that's a, fan, a point against him, saying, "Yeah, you failed to you failed to get this passed through, and you really, we, people really fucking needed this." But to say that it's like Biden purposely causing this—that's like the whole point of this rhetoric, right? It's to say tr Biden purposely implemented this, but because he had faced significant opposition in passing it, like I don't like this conflation. It feels like it's very conflationary to say like, "Oh, Biden." Like, because he did this, and then he didn't pass this, it's like, it's obviously Biden's fault. He was purposely trying to do that or something. I don't like that language as a whole. It just feels like really reduction is kind of stupid. He campaigned on around $7 trillion over a decade for our climate, infrastructure, health care, and social programs, or physical. Just over a 10-year span, the infrastructure bill delivers $55 billion, $7 trillion promised for... What's the price tag? Two trillion. Where's the seven? Did you follow through on his campaign promises? I don't know, dude. <clears throat> what I I don't I can't verify this. It's to say like he he can't like are you saying for like when he ran in like nineteen eighty seven too? Like that's so dumb. You lost the election in nineteen eighty seven. How can you like pass something if you aren't, like, the president, right? If you're, like... I don't know, dude. That feels, like, really stupid. For climate, or uh, just over a 10-year span. But Biden's military budget request ended up being about $12 billion more than Trump's last, bringing total defense court spending to the fifth seven hundred twenty three over fiscal year 2022. Proceeded to add about... campaigned on okay uh, also to say this is the first year in congress and first year as president like are you saying that just because he didn't get it in this first year doesn't mean like he can't do it in the next years like this is so annoying to me because it feels like what we're saying is like biden's like doesn't care about the american people and all of that and like we can say biden ultimately is limited by the the place the position of power he has but to say he has no care for the american people is like really fucking stupid you know uh, god i just i don't know it's just the language here employed really frustrates me is like we can okay we can point out the very obvious issues like increasing if like this this is probably something against them right like okay look but you you got this great also, the seven hundred billion would still be like under the ten year program, so I feel like that is a stupid thing. You'd have to divide seven hundred divided by because I'm pretty sure he was doing under the build back better. It would just still be under a ten year program. Seventy. <clears throat> so a better adjustment here would be seventy to fifty five, which if you make that comparison, like, this is the whole issue. We're framing of numbers more than any making actual arguments, right? It's saying, hey, we didn't get the Build Back Better bill. It passed. Like, that's an issue. We should have um, done better probably to try and get it. But, like, here's the issue is we have people like Mansion and Cinema who, if they were on our side, would be bet we would have gotten these things passed, right? But because the we didn't get those things passed, because of their issues, then it's, like, Basically, we're saying, oh, because Biden failed to do this, he probably doesn't care about the American people. He cares more about the military budget. And it feels so dishonest to frame the arguments. Like, 
we can make these arguments pretty effectively. We're like, hey, <clears throat> we promise to spend more on social spending, right? And we have some degree of social spending, which is, like, good. It just it isn't sufficient enough, right? Instead of framing the argument saying, hey, you care more about the military budget than this, it's, like, the issue comes is the amount of, like, political capital of, like, military to, like, social spending, right? More people are opposed to social spending than they are to military spending. So it's, like, that's where I would generally make the argument, at least a very minimum Congress, where maybe in the American people less, but you'd have to get me some polls or anything on that. So this is just really frustrating as an argument is to analyze and see the, the issues with the logic. It's just really frustrating for me as a whole. So there's, those are things just to keep in mind, I guess.